Good evening. In the last few hours, the Iranian regime has launched over 200 ballistic missiles at civilian targets in Israel. It's too soon to assess the impact fully, but I utterly condemn this attempt by the Iranian regime to harm innocent Israelis, to escalate this incredibly dangerous situation and push the region ever closer to the brink. It cannot be tolerated. We stand with Israel and we recognize her right to self-defense in the face of this aggression. Iran must stop these attacks, together with its proxies like Hezbollah. Iran has menaced the Middle East for far too long. Chaos and destruction brought not just to Israel, but to the people they live amongst in Lebanon and beyond. I want to get your reaction to Starmer's statement. We talked about generic and calling it unprovoked, which was crazy. But that, to me, was was striking. That was pretty disgusting. Um, yeah. Barely was, a piece. There was even no... There was no there was no sort of extra layer saying, look, we, we want peace in the region. We, we want to, you know, we, we want Israel to res- restrain, but also we want Iran to stop attacking. It, like, there was no appeal to diplomacy there. It was quite literally very similar to any Tory leadership uh, contest um, uh, person member. Yeah. Anyone running in the Tory leadership, it seemed exactly the same. It was, we unequivocally stand with Israel. Iran is the, you know, is the bad guy of the area. Um, it's a regime. I'm looking, it is a regime, right? I'm not standing Iran here. I'm just, I'm simply adhering to international law. Iran has the right to defend themselves. It's not an endorsement of them. But the idea that Iran is the only bad guy in the Middle East, to me, one screams of favoritism, obviously because of Israel and also racism. But yeah. I thought that was an v- incredibly disgusting uh, statement. So I want to get your thoughts on Starmer's statement. It was, it was genuinely disgusting. Um, you know, barely a peep out of him in sympathy for the hundreds of thousands yeah. destroyed. Uh, uh, the, the entire city is raised to the ground um, in in uh, Gaza and indeed various other parts of the Middle East by uh, Israeli actions over the years. Um, and then as the second they get even, like I say, a tiny little sliver of the, the, their own medicine, he's out mm. there deep-throating the boot in, in extraordinarily pathetic cupped fashion. Uh, and again, yeah, referring to them as her or she, I, I think it goes beyond just being creepy and weird. I think there is actually a kind of oh, a kind of paternalistic uh, element within humanity that's being sort of turned into racism there. That it's to to feminize Israel is to say, look what these evil barbaric people yeah, are doing. It's to careful woman, language, isn't right? it? It's, 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 it's essentially trying to make Israel seem like the weak uh, yeah. prey. That's being f- preyed on by you know these evil savages, these these sand people. You know that's the sort of imagery that they're trying to conjure up. I think. I think it's a very subtle and pernicious bit of um, Hasbro propaganda, basically. Uh, and the fact that he keeps doing this when he thinks he can get away with it yeah. is genuinely appalling, and shows that I mean whether he truly believes it or not, because he of course used to be sort of anti-Israel when it suited him, because the mm. leader was. The leader of the party was sort of anti-Israel as well in in Jeremy Corbyn, um, but now uh, that he can get away with it, maybe he's showing his true colours. Who knows with Keir Starmer? Who knows whether he truly believes anything? Whether he has a single political thought or theory or set of principles in his head or not? Uh, I think he would happily sell out Israel if um, you know if, if if America told them to or whatever. If yeah. the, the, the zeitgeist changed, say, all if, of a sudden. If, if America says it, that that's. If you want to know Keir Starmer's allegiance, it's it's the USA. And I think, yeah. I think, why does he keep referring to Israel as her? Part of it yeah. is um, that sort of racial supremacy, as you alluded yes. to. Yeah. But also, I think, and I've, I've found this particularly with Keir Starmer, I've, I've seen it for years, I think he's a huge uh, sycophant. And I think he has this weird um, fetish or fetish, fetishization of appealing to power or groveling for power. Like the yeah. way he speaks when he talks about how we've got all these businessmen coming into the party, these rich billionaires, the way he speaks is like they're his little master. And he's like, yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's it's I picked it up over the years and he, he, he it's a very strange thing. He loves showing the world how much of a 
a cuck, <laughs> yeah. how much of a bitch to capital he is. And I think that's the same when it comes to foreign policy, when it, when it comes to the US and Israel. I think he just desperately wants to show the world that he's a good little boy and he would do as he's told, which is what Washington tells him to do. Yeah, exactly. Like I say, they, as I mentioned earlier, there's a reason they got rid of the previous Labour leader and were so desperate to do so yeah. because they need essentially a, a piece of putty that they can mould into whatever shape they need him to be. Mm. He can believe anything. He can argue any position, including positions completely diametric to the ones he held yesterday. It's very sort of Orwellian, I suppose, in that uh, we were never at war with East Asia. We were always at war with Eurasia. And anyone who says differently is against mm. the party mm. or whatever. You know, it's that sort of thing. He will say whatever the powerful want him to say, basically. And again, I refer to him as different to the powerful because I don't think he ultimately is that powerful. I think he's at behest of people like the Labour Together uh, folks, the uh, uh, oh, Pat McFadden, yeah, uh, and people like that. I think, frankly, the government is being run by two women in a very girl boss way, in Rachel Reeves as Chancellor and Sue Gray as, I don't know, mm. de facto Queen or something. I'm not sure. Um, so, yeah, he's, he's ultimately a, he's just, yeah, he is a kind of cop. He, he's, a, he's a pathetic toadying lackey who is quite happy about that in a way. Yeah, it's, it's sort of sad. Yeah, I agree. Starmer's not particularly powerful himself. He's obviously in a, in a position of power. But the real people behind him, Rachel Ruse is one, Sue Gray, but also Morgan McSweeney and the Labour yeah. Together lot. Yeah. Um, don't be surprised if Labour Together dispose of Keir Starmer and put in Streeting or Reeves. Yeah. Um, the, the whole, I mean, we, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I, I went into the sort of the, you know, the, obviously the anti Semitism crisis, the one that's concocted by, it turns out, by Labour Together. They specifically looked for, as you described, a bit of putty. You yeah. mould him. Now he's a yeah. vacuum. He has no political principles. Maybe there was a one yeah. time when he when he did when he was younger and he was, you know, he was vaguely anti-Israel or pro-Palestine. He probably had some principles as a kid in in, in uni, um, but now he's not. He is. He listens to the ear of like like I said McSweeney. Yeah. Um, he's also pretty clueless. He's not. He's not much of a political operator, so he doesn't know any better. Well, he, I don't. Um, think, and, and I honestly that's don't the same think. Yeah, yeah. I don't. Th I don't think he was supposed to be prime minister. I think the plan was that he was going to be a kind of Kinnock figure, change yeah. the party into something vaguely centrist, yeah, yeah. centre right, and then there Tony Blair would come along, either Streeting or whoever, uh, to be the actual prime minister. But the Tories were so disastrous that the kind of schedule was way ahead of where they thought it was mm. going to be, and so they're sort of stuck with this very unpopular carpet salesman well i mean you can you can see it in their own language when the the labor right figures say well after the 2019 election we could not believe we could turn it around and it's it's gobsmacking that we've won an election and that's kind of yeah. telling because they're saying yeah we we didn't expect to turn this around we didn't instill keir starmer because we thought he's a particularly good leader and he has the right policies and um he has the right uh instincts to to turn the chances for labor around they were expecting for Starmer to lose. And you're absolutely right. Starmer was there to completely hollow out the party for anything vaguely left wing, anything va vaguely Corbynite. And then the future of Starmer doesn't really matter whether he were to win in 10 years or be someone else. He was obviously that bridge to change the party. Um, but obviously they didn't expect the Conservatives no. to collapse so much. And yeah. that's where we are now. Yeah. And there's no, I think there's very little chance he fights a second general election now. I, I think he's hold below the waterline. He's unpopular. And they've shown how ruthless they'll Astonishingly be. Astonishingly the unpopular. The, the, the yeah. decisions he's made, the things he's done, is I, I'm well, gobsmacked. I, 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 I didn't expect Starmer to be politically smart, make some good decisions, but I also didn't think he would be so risky in well, the bad things he's done. His... Not the good things, but the bad things. Yeah, look, he's decided to burn his all of his political capital on some of the dumbest stuff that will make no difference. Yeah. He's, he's decided to die on the hill of, I want to freeze granny. What, who yeah. who thinks that's a good thing? No, Literally nobody thinks that's a good policy. And yet he's made himself phenomenally mm. unpopular. And of course, he's a corrupt piece of shit and always has been. And that's been exposed now. You know, that's nice. A bit late now, like, lads. If you, again, if the, I was ranting before we got going about how the, uh, the journalist class in this country are so terrible. They didn't do any of this before the election when it actually mattered, when we could make mm. a, a, a you know a value judgment uh, on, on this person's character. No, now he's prime minister. Now we'll expose the things that he's done. Yep. Oh, thanks. Now that there's nothing we can do about it. Absolutely the, worse well, the media's than this. The media is a good segue into, into the plug because um, 
look, no one called uh, called out Starmer and Labour and their big billionaire backers. I mean, I know the four million pound from uh, Quadrature that came from the Cayman Islands that wasn't known by journalists because of the timing of it, which is obviously done on purpose, so it wasn't revealed before and the election. Don't. But that was the only that wasn't the only donation we had. Um, I mean, Labour were the uh, generated the most amount of donations from big time people. We had um, uh, John Cordwell from Phones for You. He's one that always sticks in my mind. Uh, I think it was him who said that Labour are now the 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 capitalist or vulture, venture capitalist party, commercial capitalist. They're the commercial capitalist party that I I enjoy. No one said anything then. No one said, oh, look, all these former Tory donors, even Liz Truss supporters went to the Labour Party. No journalistic integrity. But obviously, after he's in, people in the media want to look like they're doing their job. And suddenly they, they start talking about Waheed Ali and his donations. But even still, when they call him out for it, they're not even talking about bribery or what it means. They, they just say, well, it's, um, it's indulgent. You know, he's indulging himself in... In close, the biggest criticism you get, I mean, it's a good line, which is, look, he's scrapping the winter fuel payments whilst also taking freebies. It's a good hypocritical line to take, but that's not even deep enough. The truth is people give money to political parties. People gave money to Keir Starmer because they want a return on investment. Support independent media, support social justice that's there on social media. Thank you. Turn left.